So we're gonna have a look at installing some faults on canvas today. Um, I've got this decade box and we're gonna see how much resistance the network can take before it fails. Bought this decade box and what it does is dial in different amounts of resistance. We're gonna have a play with this and we're gonna see how much resistance the network can take when we short the two lines together. Let me quickly show you what this thing's about. So this is our decade box, and basically what we've got here is a, is a way to dial in different resistances. So we've got an in and an out, and I'm just connected up to the multimeter there on the resistance setting. Um, and what we can do is adjust 0.1 ohms, 1 ohms, 10 ohms, 100 ohms, and 1000 ohms. And I think they use this in a lot of electronics uh, development. And inside what we've basically got is a a massive arrangement of resistors and as you turn those switches it changes the configuration of the circuit inside the box to give us an output resistance so if we look on the meter there we can go up in 0.1 increments all the way back to zero we've got one ohms there we are it's not majorly accurate we've got a bit of resistance in the leads as well um, so we do the 100 ohms, there we go, look, 100, pretty good. And then we can dial in the thousands as well. So you can basically dial in whatever resistance combination you like. If you want one of these to play with on your own stuff, then there's a link in the description below. Go and check it out, pretty cheap. Got this for around $15. So I have already done a video on canvas faults and we put some hardwired faults on the network. So short together, short to ground, short to positive, and we did open circuit. And you'll probably agree that canvas can make some pretty funny shapes. Throw resistance into that mix and it can get even more complicated. So the aim of this video is just to try and give you an idea of what you might be looking at with different faults. So I'm connected up to canvas here with my Pico 2204A. We've got two channels connected, I've connected channel A to can high and channel B to can low. I like to, I like to keep channel A on can high. Uh, it just gives me the chance to identify what type of fault is on that line, whether it's short to ground, short to positive. So I've already got Pico set up on the laptop here and you can see there we've got a good signal. Voltage is starting at two and a half volts and can high is going up to around 3.6 volts and can low is going down to about 1.4. So I'd say that's pretty good. Plus I know there's no faults on this vehicle at the minute. So as I said at the start of the video, we're gonna have a look at how much resistance it can take on shorting the lines together. So a dead short looks like this. We'll also get the warning on the dash. So when we're dialing down the resistances, that's what we're looking for at the point where the network can't take any more. The wipers start going as well. So I'm just going to connect this box up. I've got the banana plugs in the back of the oscilloscope probes and they've got little crocodile clips on the end. I'll leave links to all this kit in the description below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the highest resistance possible with this box. So it's 9,000 999.9 ohms. <laughs> okay, so 9,999 ohms, and at the minute you can see there that we haven't really got much change. So that's as close as we can get to a complete open circuit on the network, if you like. Bearing in mind we're trying to short the wires together. So now we've shorted the network together with this box, we've got 9,999 ohms, and we can see there's not much difference on the network. It's also worth mentioning that the network does have resistors between the two lines naturally. So it's got the two 120 ohm resistors in the terminating modules, and the other modules still actually have quite high resistances over the two lines. So let's start to dial it down. We'll leave the 
rulers on the uh, screen there so we can see any changes as we dial it down. So we'll go down to 8,000, 7, 6, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, and now we're just down to 999 ohms. And we can see there that nothing has really changed. So the closer we get to zero, the closer we get to a dead short. So we're on the 900s here, so let's dial that down. 800 ohms, 700, 600, 500, 400, 3, 2, 100. Okay, so I can see that the voltages are going slightly away from the support lines we've set up there. Yeah, so you could see that there, that change between 100 ohms to 90 ohms. So I suppose we've got 200 ohms there. Do you see that change? Let's start dialing this one down now. So we're at 99 ohms. Okay, can we see them coming away from the support lines now? Starting to go a little bit fuzzy. 60 ohms, 50 ohms, 40 ohms. Now look at that now. They've gone away from the support lines. We're not measuring the same voltages anymore. We were at 3.6 and we've actually gone down to about 3.2 on can high. And can low is going down to about 1.8. We can see it's flickering a bit. Right, let's see if we can go any further. 30 ohms. 20. Okay, so it's starting to change quite a bit now. 10 ohms. Now we're just at 9 ohms. Okay, and we've got the fault has come on the dash there. Transmission fault. We heard the warning. Fuel pump fault, because this is a fuel pump module that's, that's on the network. Uh, airbag warning, because that's also on this CAN network. Uh, it's lit up like a Christmas tree. And we can see there that it's, it's quite a nasty looking signal. So let's keep going. We're at 9.9 .9 ohms. Eight ohms, okay. Okay, wipers have now come on. So now we're getting closer to a dead short. Seven ohms, six ohms. Five, four, three, two, one ohm. Okay, so now that looks like pretty much when we just put the wire straight across it at the beginning of the video. Okay, so I'm just going to reset these markers to where we had them before. So it went down to one point volts and the other one went to 3.6 volts and I'll dial this up quickly before my battery on the car dies and let's dial it back up now so start with the 1 ohms 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so with nine ohms resistance between the two wires, we kind of get some CAN communication back. You can hear it's all still not happy, but the wipers have stopped. So the wipers have stopped going. We've got run flat tire monitor and DSC faults on there. It's still not happy, but the wipers have stopped going off constantly. Let's carry on dialing up and see what we get. So we're at nine ohms there it back down to zero and we'll start with the tens so we go straight into 10 ohms okay we've got a pretty bad signal there 20 
ohms, 30 ohms. It's actually gone quiet up the front now, still a load of warnings on the dash. Let's reset the ignition and see if it'll actually run and start at that. Okay, so we're running and starting at that. So with 30 ohms, it would run and start. Let's go back down to 20 ohms. It's looking pretty rough. Okay, still running there at 20 ohms shorted across can high and can low. Back down to 10 ohms. Ooh. So I'm not very hopeful with this one. We've got all the warning lights back on the dash. The wipers haven't come on yet, so it couldn't be at the most critical end of the fault. Uh, but let's see what it does. Still running. It's quite a robust little network then. So let's go back down again. Nine. Eight ohms. See if it starts at that where the wipers came on. Okay, so at eight ohms there, we're dead. So I'm going to save a selection of reference waveforms from this video you can access them by clicking the link in the description and entering your email what we'll do then is send you a link to the folder where all the reference waveforms are stored you can then access the waveforms that we've done in the past and that is also where you'll find the ones we do in the future okay so i was just saving the waveforms for you to put in the folders and i noticed that we had a bit of a crossover on the spikes on the can high and can low. So I'm just going to pause this here for you and watch if we separate the signals, you can see that we're actually getting, we're actually getting these spikes go across the baseline value of 2.5 volts and that's on both sides. So that's also something that you might want to look for if you suspect you've got a, a resistive short together fault. The video where I put faults onto the high speed canvas network, you can check it out here. If you want to see a similar video where I do it on a low speed body can network, you can check that out here.